Welcome. I haven't done a video for a couple of weeks. I decided to take a couple of weeks off uh, just to recharge the batteries. It's been quite a busy year so far with all the things I've had to learn and adjust to and uh, sometimes you just need to step back and um, yeah, take a breather. So anyway, I'm back in the swing of things. Classes have started up again online and um, a few live classes as well. And before I continue working on the pastel drawing, I thought I'd show you a few things that uh, I've been working on over the last few weeks, some projects that I've managed to finish. So I'll just flip the camera around so I can show you. So here is um, the old books watercolour painting that's finally been framed. So this is the original and uh, I would have liked to do a double mount for this one but the frame that I had bought uh, at a vintage store it um, wasn't deep enough for me to do the double mount uh, I still think it works fine so we went with a, a charcoal grey mount board and uh, I'll just move in a bit so you can see the edges and so on um, but I particularly wanted to use this frame because of the colouring of it and the older style, I thought it would match the painting well. So there is there's that, and that one's ready to sell. And then, let's see, uh, here's the mirror that I've been renovating or upcycling, uh, and it started out a sort of an ivory colour. I got it from a, a thrift shop or an op shop and I think it cost me $60 and there were some parts that were broken so down on those decorative bits there were a few little parts missing and I actually um, got out uh, got some air drying clay and managed to fill in the gaps and I painted it with, I think it was called Pacific Dream uh, blue chalk paint or mineral paint, which is fairly similar. And uh, then I used a gold chalk or mineral paint. Some of them don't tell you which ones, what sort of it is with the gold, but um, it's fairly natural. Uh, so I put that on top. And I think that works really well. I love the beveled glass in the mirror. I always think it adds just a, an extra dimension to mirrors when you have that beveled edge. So that's turned out really well. And I just think it looks really regal with that blue and gold combination. So that is that. I'm really pleased with that one. And I'll just there's my fish. I need to. Uh, tidy up the fish tank a little bit but <laughs> um, and now down here if I just move my pastel drawing out the way I've shown you the tea trolley in progress before and it's now finally complete 
Let's take this bit off as well. So there it is in all its glory. And I can put up the front flap. I'll just reach underneath. And I'll just leave the back one down for the moment. But you get the idea. So I can now use that as a spare table if I want if I have guests over or maybe if I'm doing a workshop at my house and I need to uh, put out some food um, for the guests so they can serve themselves because I don't have a lot of space like bench space and so on in this house where I'm renting so this will be a good alternative and on the handle I tried to polish it but there was some of the um, metallic finish on it. I thought it was solid brass or something, but it was just had a coating of something on it. So uh, I decided to get some gold leaf or some fake gold leaf sheets and put it on there. And because I'm not going to use the handle much, I didn't mind. I didn't think it would rub off too much. So, but I'm really happy with that. And I managed to get four of these little. Um, heat mat things from a beautiful uh, homewares kitchenware shop in Alinda in the Dandenongs the other day so I think they go nicely I might at some point maybe spray them gold if I can find a paint that is resistant to heat um, or I might just leave them black but just so that I can protect the woodwork um, I've got four of them to put on there, they can stay in the drawer. And I put a a natural, um, what was it called, poly seal or something paint or product on top, which I brushed on. So I've lost the, the dull matte finish of the blue from the chalk paint. Um, it's just got a bit of a shine. But now I can wipe it down more easily. I'm just noticing that it still feels slightly tacky or something, not to touch with my fingers, but if I rest something on it for a while, it still feel, makes a bit of a sticky noise when I take the plate off. So whether it needs a bit longer, um, I don't know how long it takes to, to fully lose its um, tackiness or whatever, but. I mean, it feels fine now, but anyway, we'll see how that goes. And then for the handle, just move the rest of the drawing again. So I painted the handle gold, but yeah, really pleased with that. And then I had this old uh, plant stand. I've had it for decades and I was considering just taking it to an op shop because I, it wasn't my favorite thing in the house but then I thought oh, well I've got it why not use some of that the same paint and just paint it up so even though I'm not overly crash hot about the, the shape of it I think it was just someone's um, homemade job at some point now that it's got the colors on I'm really pleased with that I think I need to do one more coat of gold onto it because um, you can still see little bits of blue showing through and then Spotlight had a um, a sale on their fake flowers, so I um, lashed out and bought a bunch of flowers. Given that there was a really good reduction on on them, um, and I'm amazed just adding those colours into the house, how it um, really adds a lot of vibrancy and cheer with the yellows and the pinks there. Um, just fine each day when I come out and look at them it, it cheers me up even if it's an overcast day like today so yeah happy with how all that's looking and then there's the frog picture I'm waiting for a buyer and I'm hoping that I can put it into an exhibition soon um, so anyway that's um, what I've been working on and I do have a couple of other projects on the go, but I'll talk about them another time. So anyway, I'll pop 
pastel drawing back and there we are so here is where I got up to last time and today I'm going to start doing the fine details so I'll talk a bit about the fine details first and then I will be um, moving into just the time lapse with music so I can um, just concentrate on what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll see whether this is the final video on this or not. Um, hopefully it will be and hopefully you'll get enough pointers through watching the, the videos I've done already and this one uh, to be able to have a crack at your own landscape drawing with pastels as well. So grab your pastels if you're planning to draw along. I'll have the image up on the screen or you can use your own image and um, just get tips along the way. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will look forward to um, uh, touching base at the end just to review some things with you. So I'll see you after the intro. So on to the finer details now, and I haven't done all of the blue areas within the, the leaves of the trees, so I think at this point I'm going to add in some more blue in places. I'll leave bits of the paper showing so that I get a purer green or gold, whatever the colour is that I need in those places. But rather than trying to put the blue back on top of the green, I'd rather have some blue in there now. And I'm not going to be really pedantic about copying all of the leaves and things exactly. So I don't need to stress too much about making it exactly the same. And, oops, I'll see if I can stop that banging noise a bit. I'll just move that down. Excuse my slightly nasally voice today. I did a whole lot of gardening on the weekend and my sinuses have flared up again. I did use a mask for some of it, but I should have used it for a bit more. leaving little patches of the paper, trying to make it um, look as natural as I can. It's um, a rainy day in Melbourne today, so spring has started officially and everything's growing nicely outside. Um, it would be nice to have the sun shining, but at the same time I know my garden always loves a good soaking rain. And we don't seem to get as much rain down here in Werribee compared to where my parents live in Ferntree Gully. Yeah, the dandelions. So we'll take all that we can get for the rain. Okay, but 
we'll put it in here. some more take care of it. In some places the, well, the leaves are a bit more dense, closer together, so I don't need to worry about putting glue in all of the places. As I go down further, I will add a little bit more white if I need to, just to make it match. I could have done those bits much earlier too if I wanted to at the same time as doing the sky, but sometimes you just like to get a big area done and then move on to other larger areas with different colours rather than focusing on itsy bitsy things first. Just so you can get a feeling of you've achieved something, you've got somewhere, you've made a good start. Trying to leave the grey lead lines showing where I can. So we'll go over those with other colours. bit of sandpaper if you need to make your pasta a little bit more pointy. There are little devices that you can buy as well to sharpen pastels. I did order one once but um, it never came. <laughs> so I haven't used that company again. To the edges with this pastel drawing. The last one I did I didn't and then I regretted it because once it came to framing and I had rough edges closer in it was a bit hard to work out exactly where the edge of the mount board needed to go. So I think so long as I've got a reasonable amount of edge on the white bit then I'm okay as far as being able to stick it in the frame properly. done with one extra week of having no classes to do as much as I enjoy them um, but anyway life goes on I used to find when I was teaching full-time that most teachers would get if we had a two-week break we'd get back and say yeah I just started to feel relaxed after two weeks and then could have done with an extra week. That would have just done nicely. Back when I was a kid, I think we had three week holidays, but only three terms for the year instead of four, like we have now in Melbourne. Okay, so just leaving little patches of the white or the paper, the cream paper show you through.
I'm getting little bits of green on the edge of the pastel. So I need to be careful there. I don't mind though if some of it moves across because I'm going to put green up further anyway. All I need to do with the blue and I'll just bring in some white again if I need to. I'm just checking so just down here in this section that's where I need to add in a bit more of the white so to smooth things out. Not to smooth things out, sorry, to make the tone a bit a little bit lighter. side. Alright, so I'm done with the sky now. And now I can move on to the enjoyable bits where I can start to build up layers and adding the fine details and things. And I need to work on this tree here and bring in some darker Tones and colours. Just checking, looking for a dark brown, something that's very close to black. It would help if the sun was shining. So my lamps aren't all that bright at the moment. Go with this one. I might have to add a bit of black onto the top of it as well. I'm noticing that it's the tree is slightly lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. I'm getting some little bits of the lighter brown showing through. Here we go on an angle around a bit, jiggle it around and get rid of some of those, or I could use a smudgy stick, a paper stump, and uh, move it across. side of the branch over here. It's dark on one side, so I've got a shadow, and then it's the light is catching the branch on the other side. And I've still got my grey leg line just visible underneath. It goes up to about here and then sort of disappears once it gets thinner. I'll fix up the rest of that later. And then I go back down here and add in the other branch. It's here. Come through over the blue. And on this one there's another branch that goes all the way up to the top. And I'm just going to step back and have a look 
at that. So adding in those darker tones, it starts to create more depth as well. We get a bit more structure in there and the background is distancing itself a bit more from the foreground. So I will leave that section now um, and work out where I'm going to go to next. remembering to leave that strip of paper there because you need something for the tape to stick onto in the frame. Some framers might put the tape on the back of the paper, others from what I have observed will, they might use double-sided tape or something on the front of it so it's good to leave that, that bit of space there in case it's needed rather than going all the way to the very edge. This pastel will certainly not stick well when you put an adhesive on it. Okay, I'll fix up that edge a bit later. So I'm still, I'm not going in for the super fine details yet. I'm now I'm blocking in the smaller areas of tone and colour. Sometimes when you're holding a particular colour, you just look around the picture, the image to see, or the scene, to look and see where else is that going to go, just while you've got it. Uh, so there's going to be some here. Keep looking, looking, looking back at what you're drawing. Don't spend too much time just looking at your artwork itself. And don't stress about neatening everything up yet. You might just give things a little blow to get rid of the dust in the meantime. But the main idea is start big block in your main tones, your main areas of colour, your main shapes and then bit by bit you're building up layers but you're also blocking in smaller areas of tone and colour and then you finally are adding in the really fine details that brings in the texture and, um, and yeah, all the very precise mini details that uh, you can see in, in the landscape. Um, You should now, at this point, be getting a better feel for how dark and light things need to go now that you've blocked in all the main colours and things. Sometimes adding in the darkest tone can be really helpful, like I've got the black there, so that gives me an idea of how much lighter I need to make other things. I can compare the black with this line on the tree and realise, yep, that's got to be a bit, little bit lighter. But I might also later decide that the black stands out too much and so I might put a bit of brown. I can show you now, even on the edge of it. It might not make much difference with this one. So I might actually use a slightly lighter brown later. Yeah, that didn't make much difference yet. Um, sometimes you might have gone a bit too dark it can work with the really dark bits, but if 
you don't have anything else around the rest of the picture that's that tone, then that's going to stand out too much and so you might just need to push it back a little bit. But I will be bringing more black over here and down here and so on and even over here. So it should balance out but I might push it back a little bit more. Um, and I'll just say before I stop talking and move into the time lapse segment Oops. Um, that as you get further along in the picture the marks that you make are going to be more precise uh, they're going to be smaller and more deliberate so when you're starting off at first blocking in areas of colour you don't have to stress too much about exactly what kind of marks you make and so on. It's just, do I go this way or that way mainly, or a bit of diagonal? But then as you hone in a bit, like if you're starting to do some some leaves and things, then you'll be doing like little dots. You can't see that yet, or you need to add more contrast in there. But you'll just start to do little marks like that rather than what I did before. So I think that's enough now for me to need to explain to you. If I think of anything at the end, I can go over some things. So I'll move into time lapse now so that you can see the progress for the rest of the work. And uh, I'll catch you at the end of the video.
Well, it's finally finished. It's good to get to the end of another artwork. Hope you've enjoyed watching the progress along the way. I'll just flip the camera around and make some comments about some of the changes that I've made in the drawing and um, the progress I've made since the last video. So just bear with me while I do that. So here it is. And um, it's nice to be able to get to this point with an artwork and feel satisfied with how it's turned out. I'm sure there's always extra little bits that you could do, but it's just a matter of working out um, when is a good time to stop. And sometimes I find when you just feel like you've had enough of it, <laughs> that can be a good indication. And then I like to take a photo and even just step back and look at the work a bit more. And But if you look, take a photo and look at it, you might notice that there's part of the artwork that's standing out a bit more than the rest. Um, maybe you just need to refine something here and there to make any final tweaks. So not changing huge areas, but just, just those little bits that you might not have noticed when you were looking at the artwork a bit closer up. Uh, so I'm just trying to recall the things that I wanted to mention uh, along the way. You might have noticed that I used a bit of purple in places. From a distance it doesn't really look like there's purple in there. If I just zoom in a bit, I'll put some of the darker purple in on the tree. I've also added some in the background there and that wasn't in the photo but it was a little bit darker in that spot. And sometimes I like to just add some other colors that aren't actually there, just to add a bit more interest and vibrancy rather than just using a, a brownie green or something. So I don't mind changing a few bits here and there in an artwork to make things um, work for me better. And I did leave out a small little tree that was down here. Sometimes I don't think it's necessary to put every little bit in. I've remained faithful to the location, but it doesn't matter, I think, if you leave out a few bits here and there or alter some things. Another thing I did change was here. Originally, you might remember I had um, the darker area of vegetation was going up higher, and it just looked a bit too blocky like this, how would I describe it, as so though the tree had a giant bustle or something attached to the back of it and it didn't quite match with or balance out with the other side. So I um, brought in some of the lighter green here and added a dip in there and I think that just balances it out more. Um, what else did I want to comment on? Um, I'll just talk about the trees that are in the background. I did use a, I don't know if the colour would be a, a mauve or a, a lilac or something in the background, so I didn't just use blue. So things in the distance can appear blue, but I wanted to use a bit of a purpley tinge as well in places, Had a bit of variety there. And shadows under some of the trees. As I go close up, you'll notice there are little bits of the paper still showing through. Where's my finger? <laughs> there it is. Um, so little bits of paper still showing through in places, even on that tree there. Some of it's just the actual colour of the paper underneath, which is fine. You don't need to, if you've got good thick paper, you don't need to cover everything over so long as it works with the artwork itself um, and anything else that I wanted to mention just scanning around having a look I think from memory I altered this bit around here as well just to make the actual composition work a bit better. It just looked almost like the trees were floating or something for a while, so I needed to add in a bit more shading, make it look like there were slopes of hills and things, or slight hills 
there, so that some of the details didn't look like they were floating around too much. Uh, so I think those are the main things that I adjusted. And I've got my signature down here. It's hard to draw with the chalk pastels to do a nice, neat signature, so I had a couple of goes at that. But there it is. And I like to use a colour that will enable you to see the signature, but it doesn't um, stand out too much from a distance. It just blends in with the overall artwork. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, and I've called the artwork Picnic at River's Bend. Obviously, you can't see a picnic taking place. To be truthful, there wasn't a picnic taking place when I took the photo. But when I finished the work, I, I just thought, that looks like just the view that you would love to have if you were just sitting down having a picnic. Um, and it kind of reminds me of a scene in um, in some of the, the films of Emma by Jane Austen, where they all go on a picnic together. I think at Box Hill, not in <laughs> not in Victoria, but in the UK, and they're looking out across a beautiful view as they're picnicking, having their strawberries. I think they were picking wild strawberries or something. And uh, it's a bit of a sad scene in some ways because the conversation don't, doesn't go so well. But I, I've always been struck by that lovely view as they're just sitting there under the shade of the trees, enjoying a, a lovely picnic and looking out down across the valley. Um, and it might not appear this way just because of the composition here, but there is actually quite a drop from this point here down below so those cliffs go down further it's just that the angle of the um the grass area here that section is is blocking off more of the water down below so there is actually quite a drop there you can kind of see but in a way you can't as much um as if you're viewing it from a different angle um yeah that's another thing i thought i'd point out uh, yeah, it's a picnic at River's Bend, and I do love the fact that the sky is clear. I know sometimes people might think, oh, why don't you put some clouds in it just for some interest? And that might work for them, but for me, the perf my idea of a perfect day is a cloudless sky, so long as it's not, you know, a ridiculously hot day. But for me to walk outside and see that there's no clouds in the sky and to also uh, not see or feel any or hear any wind. That's just the perfect ideal day for me when it's just still and there's no chance of rain on the horizon. And it's just like, ah, good, we can just relax and enjoy ourselves. Nothing to upset the senses or, you know, disturb our, our peaceful afternoon or whatever. Uh, and the location is at Werribee South, so not too far from where I live. And it's on K Road as it sort of curves around the corner near a golf course, past the Werribee Mansion, heading down towards the Werribee South Beach. And um, yeah, the area really needs a spruce up. Like, if you were to look behind, like where I was standing behind me, um, when I took the photo, there was a lot of rubbish and the car park areas really need to be fixed up and so on. Uh, but there's so much potential here and so much beauty, so I hope that in the years to come that this area will be really spruced up and made into a, the tourist spot that it once was and deserves to be again. Uh, but it, it, yeah, the, the views here are just absolutely stunning. Yeah, so this is, I guess, about half an hour's drive from the centre of Melbourne, from the city, as you're heading west. So uh, if you haven't checked out this area and you're living in Victoria 
or you're visiting Australia at some point, it's a beautiful spot to, to visit. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the progress over the three videos that I've done on this work. And as you can see, it does take a lot of time to make an artwork of this size and with this amount of detail. Uh, and it's going to, by the time you've seen this video, it will have taken quite a bit of time for me to compile all the different segments of video I've taken over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed watching the process. And I'll be interested to see how you go with your own pastel drawings. If you've started attempting one, please send me an email with photos of your work if you have done anything. And yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and share the video as well. And um, remember, I've got my Zazzle store. If you want to order some products, I'll be getting this work professionally photographed or scanned soon so that I can have it have prints and cards and things available. I can also have Giclée prints printed um, if you contact me I can give you a pricing on that as well. So yeah thanks for joining me and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.